Hey you guys, I have a brand new reformer workout for you today. It's gonna be about a 60 minute workout today. I am calling this one peanut power because we're gonna use the peanut as our main prop. So, the little peanut. Okay, it's also called the Franklin ball. That's his real name actually, the Franklin ball. Um, but I call it the peanut. If you do not have a peanut, you can still do this workout. You do not have to have it. You can have a small ball, a small playground ball, five inches. Even smaller will be fine, okay? Bigger than a tennis ball probably would be, yeah, bigger than a tennis ball. But something small would work. Or you can use a pair of rolled up socks, ski socks, slipper socks, fuzzy socks, anything that would make, you know, a little round, a little oval ball like thing. <laughs> because it's gonna be in our hands, between our inner thighs and under our heel a couple times. Okay, so we will be imprinting on it. Now obviously with a ball of any sort, you're gonna have that resistance to press into it. With a pair of socks, you will not, but I will speak to that as we work, so don't worry so much about it. It's gonna be more for a tactile cue of where we need to activate and where we need to um, engage from. So that's the note on that. Now. Um, before we get going, I want to go over the setup of the machine because we have some different things today. Now, we are going to be working at the rear a little bit today, and when we are there, we're going to use the box on the rails, which we've done before, but we're going to be doing some side bending work, and typically with side bending, you like to have support at the lower half, right? That's what we use the foot strap for. But because we have the jump board up today, and I don't want you to take it down because we're gonna jump at the end of class. I don't want you to have to remove it. So we're not gonna use the foot strap. Instead, we're gonna use a resistance band. Now, you do not have to have this because when we are side bending at the back, I am not gonna ask you to lift up into the strap at all. So it's more just for peace of mind and security that you need it there, but it is not actually gonna do much, okay? So I just wanna note that as well. If you don't have one, don't fret, you can still do it, okay? But I wanna go over what I'm using. I have a fabric resistance loop on here. It is of a very heavy weight, okay? So to get it on to the shoulder blocks, it is tough to get it on there, but once it's on, it's pretty secure. Um, we are not gonna start with it on but I wanted you to see it before we got going, okay? Now, I'm gonna take it off because we're gonna need it off to get going, but I wanna show you how tough it is. It is a very tough fabric type band, okay? Now, again, there's many different kinds, many different styles of these. Some are printed, some are plain, some, they're all, all kinds now, right? Again, if you don't have this, don't use anything else but you don't really, really need it, okay? It's gonna be more for peace of mind than anything else, all right? So just side note on that. So for right now, put it on your box because you're not gonna use your box or that loop until midway through, all right? Everything else, jump board is up and ready to go. Make sure it's tight. It's gonna stay there the whole time. You're gonna start on one extra light and one light or medium spring. So for me, that is a blue and a yellow. I'm on a balanced body reformer. If you do not have an extra light spring, you can still do class. However, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to manage it with a heavier spring, okay? So if you don't have an extra light, start with your one blue and we'll go from there. Okay, but if you do, your two springs, yellow and blue. Headrest is down. Your long and short loops are both gonna be needed today, so make sure they are up and ready for you. And that's it, that's all we need to get going. All right, once you've got all of that in place, you're gonna grab your peanut and you are gonna lay down on your back. We're gonna start with some jumps. My head is on my headrest. Now I did say headrest down, however, when you jump, if you get better alignment through your spine by putting the headrest up and you feel closure at your rib cage with the headrest up, do that. Okay, if you can't maintain closure of the rib cage, you probably need the headrest up. All right, the peanut is gonna start between our hands and we're gonna make those elbows nice and wide and we're gonna traction or pull apart the peanut. All right, now you're gonna take two straight legs all the way out from the jump board. Please make sure that all 10 toes 
are on the jump board and they're not hanging out above the jump board. Okay. The entire foot is connected. My legs are straight off my hips, four inches apart and parallel. We're going to pull apart that peanut. So I start to feel my chest activate and my core is on my biceps as well. On your exhale, you're going to bend both knees and on your inhale, you're going to take it out for a little hop. So full range of motion jumping right away. You're going to feel the core turn on when you jump away to hold those legs up in mid air. So I want you to maintain rib closure and a neutral pelvis. Okay. So in other words, we don't want any rainbows at the low back. You're going to manage that by drawing the belly button up and in and keeping those ribs closed. Okay. Your headrest can also be up to help that. Good. Every time you land, you know how I am, right? That heel needs to make a full connection to the jump board every single time. Okay. Every time. Good. You land and you stick the heel and then we leave heel ball toe, land toe ball heel, leave heel ball toe. You're here for four. Good. Last three actively pull apart that peanut last two. Okay. Now keep jumping. You're going to hover your right leg over the jump board. You are now jumping on your left leg only. Okay. Now we're going to add an ab curl. So on your exhale, you're going to lift head, neck and shoulders and hold, hold that ab curl. You're still pulling apart that peanut. Good. Hold it here. You're jumping solely on that left leg. All same rules apply. Your toes are pointing straight up. We're in parallel position with our lower body. Okay. The heel makes contact and sticks to that jump board. Every time you land, you're here for four. Good. Last three, last two. Now follow my lead. You're going to keep jumping right knee pulls into tabletop. And you keep jumping with the right leg in tabletop shin parallel to the floor for four, for three, pull apart that peanut for two. Good. Now we're going to start to alternate legs, right leg's going to land left leg in tabletop switch, switch. So you're alternating the leg that pulls into tabletop. You are still holding your ab curl. Okay. We will let it go, but not yet. All right. You're here for four more switches, four and switch three and switch. Keep using your breath. Inhale out two and switch last one. Now left leg hovers in tabletop, left leg hovers in table and you're jumping just on that right leg. Keep pulling apart that peanut. Good. Hold your ab curl. If you can, I know you're start to feel those neck extensor muscles, but we're working on their strength as well. You're here for four. Good. Last three, two, hold this here. Left leg is straight. Now hovering over the jump board. You're still jumping on your right leg. Good. Hold on to this. Cause you're going to let your ab curl go in six in five. In four, last three, last two. Good. Keep jumping. Set your head down. Put your left leg on the jump board as well. Both legs are jumping parallel position. Exactly how we started class. Good. We have one more layer here. We're going to keep the head, neck and shoulders down. We are still actively pulling apart that peanut, feeling that core activation, really, really lighting it up. Good. You're here for four and we're going to alternate our landing between a wide landing and then a narrow landing. Good. Last one in parallel or last one in, in four inches apart right here. You're going to land wide and land parallel or not parallel, <laughs> narrow land wide and narrow. Good. Wide. You are in parallel the entire time, meaning your toes are pointing straight up. Okay. That didn't change, but you're landing narrow and you're landing wide, landing narrow and landing wide. Good. Hang on. There's so much going on when we jump, right? This, so it moves so fast and I cue so much. It's a lot to start class with a jump sequence. 
Good. We're here for eight. Land wide. Land narrow. Hopefully you're feeling the heat. Seven. And narrow. This is meant to pick up the heart rate. Good. Hang on. You've got five. And narrow. Good. Four. When I say narrow, we're about four inches apart with those legs, right under the hip. Good. Last two, wide. Pull apart that peanut. You're gonna feel those biceps. Last one, and narrow, and come all the way in. Oh, kind of an abrupt stop, right? <laughs> I know. Okay, you're gonna stay on your back. You're gonna keep the peanut between your palms. Lengthen your legs all the way out to two straight legs, okay? We're gonna do a roll up. So I want you to make sure that you have a little bit of air between yourself and your shoulder blocks. So if you need to scoot your booty forward a little bit to get that space, go ahead and do it, okay? And you may need to adjust that as you roll here because we tend to be pushed back. Your hands are gonna take that peanut directly up and over the chest. Now, we're not gonna actively pull it apart on this one. We're gonna give the arms a break with that because I know you feel your forearms and that grip strength coming into play. On your exhale, we're gonna lift head, neck, and shoulders, and we're gonna roll all the way up, okay? So on your exhale, we're gonna lift head, neck, and shoulders, rolling, narrowing the rib cage, drawing the belly button up and in. You're gonna lift all the way up to your sitting bones, and you're gonna lift that peanut up and overhead. So you are stacking the spine and directly on your sitting bones. We're gonna roll down the same way we came up. You're gonna allow that tailbone to curl underneath. Good, rolling through the length of the spine all the way down to the carriage, nice and slow. Peanut is still up and over the chest. Okay, here we go. Feet are flat on that jump board, about mid jump board. Exhale, lifting head, neck, and shoulders, narrowing the rib cage, drawing the belly button up and in. You lift all the way up to the tips of the sitting bones, Reach your peanut overhead so you find length out of your waistline. And then we roll down the same way we came up. The gear wheels of the pelvis turn. We roll through the lumbar spine, the mid spine, all the way down to the cervical spine. Here we go. Let's do it again. Two more. Exhale, rolling up. Good. Finding control with that lift and that reach. Peanut reaches up and overhead. And let's go all the way back down with control, with control. I want you to go down really slow. Good, if you need to reset away from your shoulder blocks, do that, okay? Last one, we're gonna roll all the way up. Exhale, narrow the rib cage, draw the belly button up and in, lift all the way up, stack the spine, hold. Okay, we're gonna go only halfway back. So on your exhale, you're gonna draw that tailbone underneath the pel pelvis, rolling through the lumbar spine. You're gonna approach the mid back and allow the peanut to come right off the chest. Okay, so we are engaged in this shallow curl. You're gonna take that peanut to the right hand and you're gonna open both arms nice and wide. Okay, but they're still in front of my body. I can see them in my peripheral vision. You're gonna take that peanut and you're gonna pass it through the midline to the left arm and open wide. Good, pass it through the midline to the right, and open. Good, pass it through the midline to the left, and open. Good, one more to the right. We're gonna add a twist to this, but not yet. One more pass to the left. Everything should feel shaky when those arms are open wide. The next time you pass the peanut to the right, you're gonna look at the peanut as you pass it to the right hand, and open up wide. Look at the peanut as you pass it to the left hand and open it wide. Good, so my right arm is gonna stay put as I come to meet it, okay? And then I open. Pass it to the left, take a look. And open, so you're feeling the rib basket rotate as you pass that peanut. Good, to the left. And center, one more each way. To the right, my legs are straight, my feet are flat, open. Good, rotate to the left and open. Bring the peanut right off the chest at the center body. Roll your shoulders down your back, stay in your shallow curl and give me little pulses up. One inch up and down. Good, rolling through the rib, I'm not through the rib cage, but pulling from the lowest rib. 
Good, for four, for three, for two, last one, and roll it all the way down. Oh, okay, we did it. <laughs> we did it. All right, now you're going to take the peanut and place it under your sacrum. So let's bend both knees to come in. Okay, now my head, neck, and shoulders are gonna stay down for, th for this entire sequence. Make sure your headrest is down for this piece. Okay, all the way down for sure. Peanut is gonna come under the sacrum. So to make it less confusing, I'm gonna be pretty graphic. You're placing the peanut right above the butt crack. J that, I know that sounds horrible, but that's where it goes. Okay, so I want you to make sure that's where it is. It is not under the tailbone. It is under the sacrum, so a little bit lower. Okay, now you're going to grab your straps. Okay, my feet are just hanging out on the jump board right now while I get set up. Short loops in your hands. Okay, you're going to take your right leg into tabletop, so no more support of the jump board and left leg's going to join it in tabletop. So you are balancing on the peanut. I want you to find tension in your straps. So you're going to pull your straps forward just a few inches so that my fingertips line up with my underarm, okay? And I have tension through my waistline on both sides. Now, what you're looking for here, this is very much about pelvic stability, and that's going to come from the core. You want to keep your pelvis and your spine in neutral. So hip bones, locate those. They need to be shining straight up and down. There is no splaying of the ribs and there's no rainbowing of the low back. We've got the ribs and the hips aligned nicely. Okay, now we're gonna hold that as we work through the upper body. Four inches apart between your legs. Okay, so they're right off the hip, point your toes. My arms only on my exhale are gonna draw down by my side all the way to the carriage and inhale back up. Exhale, arms come down to the carriage. We balance on this peanut and then inhale, arms back to start. I'm never losing tension on my straps. I'm maintaining that the entire time. It should not feel overly heavy through the upper body. What we're really focused on right now is drawing the navel up and in, the belly button up and in, and maintaining that pelvic stability down, and up. Good. Two more. Exhale down. Inhale up. Last one. Exhale, press. And up now. We're going to layer on. We're going to st start to alternate legs. So the next time I send my arms down, my right leg is going to extend long. Point the toe. The toes are pointed. They remain pointed this entire sequence. And then we draw the knee back in over the hip, right? They're over the hip, not over the belly button, because we need to maintain a neutral pelvis. Arms down, left leg extends. So we're going to alternate those legs. Inhale up. Good. Exhale, right leg extends, arms go long. And then we bring it back. Left leg extends, arms go long. Good. And bring it back. Good. Two more each side. Right leg. And draw it back. Good. Left leg. So because we are elevated through the pelvis, that's why my head, neck, and shoulders are staying down on this sequence. Good. Last time with the right leg. Good. And bring it back. Last time with the left. And back now. You're going to take the right leg out and hold it. So arms are going to go down, right leg's going to extend and hold. Okay, now just my arms. I'm going to bend at the elbow, keeping my tricep connected to the carriage, and inhale, extend through the tricep. Bend at the elbow, 90 degree bend, right? My fingertips face straight up, and then extend. Good. Focusing on only the movement in the upper body, my head, neck, and shoulders are relaxed. My pelvis is nice and quiet. I'm isometrically holding that right leg out there. That's core strength. Good. Three more. Extend and bend. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend. 
Last one. Inhale, extend and bend. Now, you're going to take those arms and you're going to extend them and hold them down to the carriage. Just hold them there. Now, my right leg, I'm going to keep the toe pointed as I lift the leg straight over the hip, flex the foot, and lower the leg to the hover over the jump board. Point the toe, lift the leg, flex the foot, lower the leg. Good. Feel the core control this point. Lift with the psoas. Flex and lower. Control. Point and lift. Flex and lower. Two more. Point and lift. Flex and lower. Last one. Point and lift. Draw that belly button up and in. Flex and lower. And now right here, pull the right knee back to tabletop. Arms come all the way back up, and we're going to start the other side, okay? Right here, left leg goes long, arms go down by your side, hold. Okay, level everything out. Level neutralized pelvis, belly button up and in. Relax the head, neck, and shoulders. Just the elbows are going to bend and press. Good, bend and press. Good. Draw that navel up and in. You're holding on right here. And press. Nice control. Only the elbow bends. My tricep stays connected to the carriage. Good. Four more. Inhale, press. Exhale, bend. Inhale, press. Exhale, bend. Two more. Notice the pace, right? We're pausing at the end range of every movement so we can really feel that mind and muscle connection. Good. The next time that you have your arms down, all the way down, hold them there. You're going to point that left toe more sincerely and lift that left leg straight up. Flex the left foot and lowered right to that hover over the jump board. Point and lift, flex and lower. Now, when I lift and lower this leg, my pelvis stays completely quiet on top of that peanut. Point and lift, flex and lower. My right knee is locked over my hip. Four more. Point and lift, flex and lower. Last three. Point and lift, flex and lower. Last two. Lift, lower. Last one. Point and lift. Flex and lower. Now right here, you're going to point that toe. Bring that leg back to tabletop. My knees are four inches apart, parallel. Bring your arms all the way back up and over the shoulders or over the underarm. We're going to take both legs long. But before we do that, we're going to glue the inner thighs together so we have the strength of our midline. Both arms are going to go long by your side as you lengthen out your legs and hold right here. And now my arms. I want you to turn your palms to face your body. And you're going to open your arms into a T. They do not go any higher than your underarm. And then we narrow back by the side. Good. Kind of like a wine bottle opener, right? When you take out the cork, right? You press those arms down by the side. Good. Open and press. Legs are long. If you need to bend your knees to bring it back to tabletop, and do this, do it that way. Okay, that's going to shorten your lever. Open and close. Three more. Open and close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Last one. Open and close. And bring it all the way in. Whew. Rest those feet on your jump board. Hang up your straps for a second. You're going to take that peanut out from under the sacrum. Oh, okay. That feels good. We're coming up. We are coming up, and I am going to face you. So you're going to turn to your right. Turn to your right, and we're going to take off the blue spring we had on. So you're going to be on one extra light spring. Now, if you don't have a light, extra light spring, I tell, if you're going to work out with me frequently, an extra light spring is very necessary, okay? If you do not have one today, use the lightest spring you have. You may need to manage with short, uh, longer loops 
or spacing of your body, and I'll speak to that as we work, okay? But it's, it's all manageable. All right, your peanut is going to come to the inner thigh, all right? So we're gonna use it so that we don't overly grip the booty and we think a little bit more about the inner thighs and the psoas. So just above the knee is where you want that peanut to be. And I do not want you to squeeze life out of it, okay? I want you to just hold it gently between the inner thighs. Okay, now you're gonna grab your short loop and you're gonna place both palms inside your short loop, thumbs on the outside, okay? You're gonna bring your palms to prayer right at chest center. Now we're gonna work on range of motion and twisting at the waistline. So relax your shoulders. You're thinking about sternum over pubic bone, Draw the belly button up and in. I do not want you to lean back or forward. I want you to stay tall. And I also want you to think about not gripping the booty. Think a little bit more about squeezing the peanut gently rather than gripping the booty. Okay, here we go. On your inhale, we're going to rotate waistline up so the hips do not get to move. You're going to rotate towards the jump board. Keep your thumbs at chest center. Okay, thumbs stay right there. And then we're going to exhale back to center. Good. Inhale. Eyes and thumbs stay right at chest center. And then we come back to center. Okay. So what I don't want you to do is push the palms to get a deeper twist. I also don't want you to allow the pelvis to move. So imagine I'm holding your hips and you can only rotate as far as you can, keeping the palms at chest center. Your eyes are a big piece of this. So if your eyes stay on your fingertips, that's going to help. Okay, make sure we have an exhale because we're thinking about the diaphragm dropping. I'm sorry, an inhale. You're going to think about your inhale as you rotate. The diaphragm drops. And then exhale back to start. Good. Inhale, diaphragm drops. Exhale back to start. Good. Four more. Inhale, range of motion can be really frustrating here. So I do not want you to get overly excited or frustrated so where you start to drive through the palms because then we're missing the point of the exercise. Okay, we're working on rotation. And the only way that's going to increase is if we follow these guidelines, right? Last two. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Last one. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Now, holding right here. You're going to take that short loop in your right hand only. If you are on anything heavier than an extra light spring, please go to your long loop. You can also get closer to your shoulder blocks. It's going to make it less aggressive. Okay, the closer to your shoulder blocks, less aggressive. Closer to the jump board, more aggressive. Okay, left arm's going to come out into a lateral reach, palm down, right off the shoulder. Make sure that arm is slightly in front of you so that we're not leaning back. Let's draw that belly button up and in. Your right arm is in a low W position. Uh, palm forward. On your inhale, you're going to take that right arm up and over for a little side bend towards your jump board but we're not gonna collapse through the left waistline. That's why this left arm is out here. It's helping maintain lift through the waist. And then we're gonna exhale as we come back to start. Good, inhale, reaching that right bicep up and over the ear. There's no momentum driving me. This is all strength and control. Exhale, back to start. Are we gripping the booty? Can we think more about imprinting the peanut gently? Good, inhale, up and over. Exhale, back to start. You've got three more right here. Inhale, reach up and over. Exhale, back. Good, that inhale is also helping us keep length on the waist. Inhale, up and over. Exhale, back to start. You've got one more right here. Inhale, up and over, finding length, maintaining space on the left as well as the right. And we come back to start and we hang up that strap. All right, you are coming to the floor with your peanut. You are staying on your extra light spring. Again, lightest spring you have, please, okay? Come off the carriage right in front of you. The peanut is gonna come to the floor. So you're gonna place the peanut on the floor the wide way, 
Okay, if you have a ball, that'll be fine. If you have socks, this is where we're gonna imprint a little bit at times. So I just want you to manage that if you have socks. But you are not going to put too much weight on this peanut. So what I want you to do is I want you to put the ball of your foot on the floor and your right heel on the peanut, the center of the peanut, okay? Now, your left foot, I'm gonna have to bring it back here. Your left foot is gonna go against your shoulder block. Okay, now my left toes are turned under up against that shoulder block. Depending on height of person, you wanna make sure that you are standing straight up on your right leg and your left knee is bent, but you're able to extend it, okay? It's not gonna ever be perfectly straight if we're standing straight up, okay? Bone rhythms right here, they're gonna prevent that. All right, but I want you to stand directly up on the ball of your right foot so you're tall, okay? Now, both hands are gonna come to your hip for this one. We're gonna manage the pelvis. We're gonna think about drawing the belly button up and in. Now, right now, you are putting very little weight on the peanut, okay? The, the weight is balanced in the ball of your foot, base of your big toe to the base of your pinky toe, okay? My left leg has pushed the carriage out just a little bit, okay? But my knee is still bent. All right, now here we go. We're gonna lower into a lunge, bending our standing leg. So you're gonna bend your right knee, allow that torso to tilt forward so that we protect our low back and hold your lunge there for a second. Okay, so my back leg is now straight. My right foot, I am balancing on the ball of my foot. All right, so therefore we're recruiting the right inner thigh a little bit more. You're gonna feel that quad. Okay, very little weight on the peanut. Think about sending your right sits bone back and your left hip forward so your hips are nice and square. I want you to see how long you can make that right thigh. From kneecap to sits bone, how long can you reach that thigh bone? Okay, now on your inhale, you're gonna rise back up to a straight right leg. Okay, balance, this is a lot of balance right here. You're gonna bend that right knee let the torso tilt, find your lunge, send that right hip back, left hip forward. Check out your right kneecap. Is it tracking with big toe, second toe? Is it behind your toes? Let's make sure that's happening. And then we're gonna inhale as we rise up. Whew. Okay, two more of just the lunge before I add on, okay? You can always take the peanut out of the mix, okay? You can always have your foot flat on the floor if that's better for you today. Okay, this is a lot of balance. Inhale, stand up on the right leg. Good, last one. You're gonna hinge and take that lunge and hold it for me this time. Now, this is where you're gonna imprint the peanut. You're gonna press down through your heel, press on the peanut and lift up off of it. Press down and lift up. Okay, you're staying in your lunge. Press down and lift up. If you've got socks, Okay, just watch how far you press down, right? It's gonna imprint really easily. Down and up, good. Three more, press down and up, good. Last two, down and up. It should feel shaky through that right leg. Down and up, we're gonna reset. Come all the way up out of your lunge, okay? You're not, the, the range of motion is small here, okay? So I want you to manage that. All right, now we're gonna find that lunge one more time. You're gonna lower into your lunge, let the torso tilt, okay? Watch the alignment of that right knee. Things should be pretty, pretty shaky now. Now your back leg, your left knee, is gonna bend, maybe it taps the carry, carriage, maybe not, and extend. Bend your left knee and extend your left knee. So it's a mini carriage pull. Bend and press. Good, draw that belly button up and in. Your jump board is always there if you need it for support. Okay, and press, three more. Bend and press, last two. Bend and press, last one. Bend and press, hold your lunge for me, just hold. Can you take your arms up into a wide V and hold and breathe for four. Ooh, that leg is shaking for three. Last two and come all the way up. Oh, oh, shake right off that peanut. Okay, we're gonna do a little action at the rear of the machine. So 
Leave your springs how they are. They're on your, you're on your lightest spring. Take your peanut, place it on the carriage. Now, you're going to take your straps off. Take them off and let them be in the well, okay? You're going to take your resistance loop, if you have one, and you are going to place it around your shoulder blocks. It's going to be tight, okay? But I want you to get it as low as you can on the shoulder blocks and make sure it's really on there nice and stable, okay? If you have one. If not, that's okay. Grab your box. Your box is going to come short box style on the rails, okay? Now, you want to slide that box pretty close to the rear. It's all going to be dependent on size of person, but even for me, five foot, right? I want it pretty far back. Step into your well, okay? I am facing you, so I'm facing, if I'm looking toward the front, I'm facing to the right, okay? Grab your peanut. You are going to come onto your right hip, okay? So right hip on the box, half lotus with that right leg, so my right inner thigh shines up. My left foot is going to come to my resistance loop or the headrest, right between the shoulder blocks is where you want to be. Now, if you have a loop, you want your ankle on top of the loop and your foot under the other side of the loop. So you've kind of laced it in there. So you've got a little bit of support. My left toes shine straight forward. So I'm lifting from the top side of my hip, just like we would with a foot strap. However, I'm not going to ask you to rely on the band today. All right? So that's why range of motion is going to be different here. If you don't have a strap, same foot position. I just want you to get the sole of your foot a little more connected to the carriage, okay? Peanut between your palms. You're going to pull it apart, just like we did in the beginning. Let's find a diagonal position with the body. So I'm lengthening out of my left hip. My waistline is long, okay? I'm staying lifted and I'm maintaining space on the right as well. So you're only going to angle yourself as much as you can, keeping stability. Now from here. We're going to curl up, pulling apart the peanut. I'm actively pulling this apart and back to my diagonal. Good. I'm going to curl up and come back to my diagonal. So I am very supported from my right hip. Okay. However, I'm finding as much length as I can on the waistline and curling with length there. So that's why we want to use the peanut, pull it apart because you're really going to activate the TA even more. It's an inhale as you come up. So you're thinking about maintaining space with your inhale because your diaphragm drops, right? Exhale, come back to your diagonal. Inhale, curl up. Exhale, find your diagonal. Good. Four more. Curl up. Inhale. Exhale, find your diagonal. Last three. Curl up. And find your diagonal, pull apart that peanut, really be active there. You're going to feel the biceps and the chest really light up. Those transverse abdominals have no choice when you're pulling on that peanut. It's a curl and a release to the diagonal. On your next one, you're going to hold your curl and pull apart that peanut even more. Hold it for four, for three, for two. Find your diagonal. And now you're going to give me a little twist towards the risers and back to your diagonal, okay? You're just twisting. Twisting to the right, back to center. Good. It's a one-inch rotation from the waist. Your hips don't want to move in this position, right? Three more. Twist and center. Last two. Twist. Pull apart that peanut. Don't forget about it. And center. Last one. Twist and center. And come all the way up. Okay. You're going to turn and face your headrest. Okay. So take your foot out. Turn around. Face it. You're going to still sit on the box. Now, if you have a loop, you want to lace your toes in between the resistance band so that the arch of your foot is on top of one side of the band and your toes are under the other side. If you don't have a band, just put your feet flat on your headrest. Okay. I'm going to scoot forward on my box so I have some space behind me. Okay, four to six inches behind me. Peanut is going to come to the inner. Actually, no, we're going to keep the peanut in the hands. I changed it at the last minute. All right, now you're going to sit nice and tall on your sitting bones. I want you to pierce the box with your sitting bones. Think posture here. Okay, 
you're gonna pull apart that peanut again. We're gonna think elbows wide, pull apart the peanut. Okay, Tr collarbone nice and wide. On your inhale, you're gonna lean back, right? So think about the dowel that runs from the crown of our head out our tailbone. You're gonna lean on that dowel, so it's a hinge. Inhale, two to three inches, you lean. This just gets you off of the tip of your sitting bones. Now from here, you're gonna start the roll. You're gonna think about the tailbone curling under the pelvis, drawing the belly button up and in. You're gonna think about rolling through the lumbar spine and hold, okay? So now my knees only have a shallow bend to them. Okay, you're in this curl, this C curve. I want you to think about drawing the belly button up and out between your shoulder blades, okay? Now hold here. You're gonna take that peanut and you're gonna pass it to the right hand and open those arms wide, just like we did earlier with our roll up, okay? From here, you're gonna twist and pass the peanut to your left hand and open up without the peanut. The peanut's now in the left hand. Pass the peanut to the right hand, it's a twist, and open up without the peanut. Good, pass it to the left and open wide. Pass it to the right. So you're doing the same thing we did on that roll up. Okay, basically just almost repeating it completely. Good, twist and center. Good, really focused on the transverse abdominal muscles here. Good, twist and open. Good, pass it to the right. Stay in that shallow curl, don't come up. Pass it to the left, you have one more each side and open. Pass it to the right, you're twisting and looking at the peanut. Exhale, center. Pass it to the left, that's an inhale. And open. Now bring that peanut back to chest center between both hands, but you're gonna lift those arms up and overhead and down towards your thighs. Up and overhead and down towards your thighs. So it's a lift and lower of those long arms. Those arms never come past your ears, never. Okay, because we wanna keep the rib closure and that shallow curl. Every time you bring those arms overhead, it should feel really shaky. And back, you have two more. Inhale, feel the shoulder blades roll down the back body, and then they come back to start. Good, last one, you're gonna hold the arms up there and give me a little pulse of your roll. From the bottom rib, little lift and lower for six, for five, for four, last three, last two, and come all the way up. Whew. Okay, turn to your left. We're gonna do the side bend on the other side. Okay, so half lotus on your box. Your right foot now is gonna lace in between the loop. Toes pointing straight forward on that right foot. Now remember, I'm not relying on the loop. It's just giving me something tactile for my mind to feel connected, okay? But if you don't have one, you're not being supported with it, so you should be fine, all right? Now, you're gonna make sure that you're lifting or lengthening from the top hip. So my quad is pointing straight forward. I'm supported on my left hip. Peanut between the palms, pull it apart, elbows wide. Collarbone chases those elbows, so think wide all the way across the top body. You're gonna inhale as you lengthen out to your very best diagonal and hold. Okay, now from here, we're gonna curl up on an inhale. Exhale, lengthen back out. Right here, curl through the waistline. This is an inhale to maintain space. Exhale, come back. Find that long line, okay? Inhale, lifting from the crown of your head. Exhale, lengthen back out. Think about growing longer as you curl up and then back to start. Good, longer as you curl up, and back to start. Pull apart that peanut, make those biceps active. It's also gonna really turn on the TA. And lengthen, good, four more. Curl up, and lengthen. Last three, curl up, and lengthen. Last two, inhale, and exhale, last one, curl it up and lengthen and hold right here. Now we do that twist. We're gonna rotate towards the risers one inch and back to center. It's a twist from the rib cage. Rotate 
and center. Try not to hike your shoulders. Pull apart that peanut. Make it active through the biceps. And center. Good. Three more. Twist. And center. Last two. Twist. And center. Last one. Twist. And center. Hold it right here. Just hold that diagonal for four, for three, for two, and come all the way up. Okay, let's come down. You step into the well. You're coming out on the other side of your machine now. Let's take the box down because you no longer need your box the rest of class. So place it towards the rear of the machine. And let's hang our loops or our straps back up onto their handlebars and take off your resistance loop. You no longer need that as well. Okay, now we're coming into that lunge on the other side, right? Yes, <laughs> double checking myself. You are still on your lightest spring, an extra light if you have one. Peanut comes down. This time the left ball of the foot is coming to the floor with your left heel on top of the peanut. Use the jump board for support as you get set up. Now, you are standing right foot against the shoulder block. You are standing on the, in releve on the ball of your left foot. Okay, you have very little weight on the peanut. Very, very little, okay? And that's balance, and that's what we're working on, okay? Balance and control, stability. Hands on the hips. All right, now from here. You're gonna send that right leg out a little bit so it's a little bit more straight. It's not gonna be perfect because of the bone rhythms here. Now we're gonna allow the torso to tilt as we bend the left knee and we find a lunge without putting weight in the peanut the weight is through the ball of our foot. Spread those five toes nice and wide. Stay in your first lunge and check everything. Is our torso tilted? Is our low back long? Check. Is our left knee in front of the ankle, but behind the toes? Check. Okay. Left kneecap, tracking with big toe, second toe? Check. Are we off the peanut? Are we light on the peanut? Check. Okay. Back leg is straight. Here we go. Inhale, rise all the way up to a straight left leg. The right knee is always bent a little bit, okay, until you find that full lunge. Go ahead and tilt. Exhale, bend that left knee, tilt. Find your lunge. Send your left sitting bone back and your right hip forward, squaring the pelvis off, right? And then we come all the way back up. You have two more. Exhale, reach that left sitting bone back. Let the left knee bend. Checking your alignment every time. Really focusing on form first. Form first, otherwise none of this really matters. Okay, and come all the way up. I wanna protect you from injury and make you stronger. Okay, through those bone rhythms and that muscle activation the way it's supposed to be. Okay, left knee bends. Good, hold that lunge, check it out. Send that left sitting bone back. Reach As long as you can make that left thigh bone, I want you to make it. Okay, inhale, rise up. Now your next one is gonna be a hold. Here we go, <laughs> All right? Mentally prepare yourself. Bend that left knee, find your lunge, hold it. And this is where we're gonna imprint that peanut, socks, ball, whatever you have. You're gonna press down through your heel and up. Press down and up. So you're imprinting the peanut and releasing. Imprint, release, good. Imprint, release for four. Press, release. Stay in your lunge. Three, release. Two, release. Last one, release. Come all the way up to reset. All the way up. Balance, control. Here we go. We got one more hold. Are you ready? Okay. Send yourself back into that lunge. Bend that left knee. Hold it there. Hold and breathe. Draw the belly button up and in. Right knee. Bend and extend. Now, because of the height of my reformer and myself, <laughs> I am able to tap my knee on my carriage. You may not be able to do that. That's okay, okay? I want you to just bend and extend that knee. Don't worry about if, the, if it's different, right? The height is different. The bone rhythms are the same. The movement is the same. Bend and press. Everything else is isometric and stable. Right knee bends. It's a mini carriage pull and press. Four more. Bend and press. Last three. Bend and press. My eyes are on my foot bar. 
Okay, so therefore, I'm not looking up. Good, last two. Bend and press. Last one. Bend and press. Now hold, hold right here. Hold your lunge. Don't come out of it. Bring your arms up into a wide V and just hold and breathe for me. Send that left sitting bone back, right hip forward. You're here for four, for three. Light on your peanut for two. And come all the way up. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> okay, we are going to come into that high kneel on the other side. So grab your peanut off the floor. You are going to kneel facing the other direction. So if I was looking at the jump board, I am now to the left. You're going to manage your distance from your shoulder blocks. Remember, the closer you are to your shoulder blocks, less aggressive. Okay, so depending on your spring, make sure you're on your lightest spring. Peanut comes right above the knee, right between those inner thighs, okay? It's low because other, we want to be, have to be able to hold on to it, right? If it's up any higher, you don't really have to do anything. I want you to think about activation through the inner thighs. Grab your short loop and place your hands in prayer inside your short loop, thumbs on the outside. Hands are going to come right to chest center, and that is where they're going to be locked. We are not going to allow them to shift away from the midline, okay? Now... Roll your shoulders down your back, grow tall, relax your booty. Think about your inner thighs, imprinting the peanut slightly. You're going to inhale as you rotate to the right, not letting your thumbs leave your midline. Exhale, center. Good. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Good. You're going to twist. Inhale. Exhale, remember not to get frustrated with range of motion. I tell this story every time I do this twisting because I remember, I'll never forget, last four, I'll never forget the first time I went to do this move and I could barely rotate. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? Am I not doing it right? What's wrong? I just didn't have that mobility yet and it needed to develop. Last three, inhale, rotate. Exhale back to center. Last two. So all of this has a perfect purpose, right? It's all functional movement, preparing you for whatever you've got going on in your life. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, center. Now stay right here. Your right arm is going to reach out into a T, palm down. Your left arm is going to be in a deep W, palm forward. You're relaxing the booty and you're thinking about your inner thighs holding on to the peanut. Okay, you can take your longer loop if you need it. On your inhale, you're going to take that left arm up and over and you're going to find a side bend without collapsing on your right waistline. That's why this right arm is out today. And then you're going to come back to center, deep W. Inhale, left bicep comes over the left ear. We find that length and that reach. And then we come back to start. Good. Inhale, up and over. Control, no momentum. We are not whipping that strap. Exhale, back to center. Think about those inner thighs holding you up. Think about that sternum over the pubic bone. Inhale. Exhale, center. You have four more. Hang on to it. Good. Inhale. And exhale back to center, last three. When you take this arm up and overhead, I do not want you to hike your shoulders, okay? Do not find tension there. We want to keep the shoulders relaxed. Last two. Inhale, up and over. Exhale back to center, slow and intentional movement, right? Every one, every move. Inhale, up and over, it's intentional. And back to center, and bring that left arm all the way down. Okay, we are ending with a tiny little jump sequence. Come on to your back. Come on to your back. Oh, actually, I lied. We do have a little sequence at the bar. Okay, <laughs> come on to your back all the way down. You are still on your lightest spring, okay? The peanut is coming in between your inner thigh, okay, right there. This is a very short jump sequence, but it is extremely core-focused. So right now, on one extra light spring, you're going to feel like you're floating. Bear with me. Okay, we're going to take an ab curl right away. Make sure you have space between you and your shoulder blocks. Interlace your fingers. Hands are going to come behind the base of the skull, thumbs long down the neck. 
Okay, here we go. Find one ab curl and hold it. Draw that belly button up and in. Okay, now, your feet are naturally hip width apart because of your peanut. If you have socks, okay, I want you to make sure you're maintaining parallel legs, toes up. Okay, here we go. You're gonna roll through your foot. There is no bend of the knee here. You're gonna roll through your foot and give a little flick off your toes and land. Roll through your foot, give a little flick and land. So these are called straight leg jumps. You're gonna resist the urge to bend your knee, okay? And that is hard to do because naturally, we wanna absorb our landing by bending the knee. But I don't want you to do that, okay? So you're gonna feel the core right away. I'm already shaking, I'm already shaking. One extra light spring is gonna have you floating, okay? So it's a lot of core strength here. If it is too much, put a heavier spring on instead. So take off the yellow and put on a blue, okay? Or you can even try a red if you need more support. Okay, you're holding your ab curl. We're doing these little straight leg flicks right off the toe. Then we land and we connect the heel. Flick and land. It's an inhale. Exhale, land. Good, four more. Inhale, exhale, land. We're gonna add a little pulse of the peanut after this one right here. The next time you leave your jump board, it's a double squeeze of the peanut and land. Inner thighs, double pulse the peanut, land. Good, double pulse, land. Still straight leg jumps, double pulse, land. Good, six, and land. Five, double squeeze. Four, land. Last three, commit to it. This is all you got. Last two, and last one, and come all the way in. Whew. Give your knees a little hug. Give them a little hug, and then you're gonna come off the reformer around to the front, and we're gonna end right there. All right, so come around. You're all the way at the front of your machine. We're gonna use this jump board almost like a ballet bar. Okay, your peanut is coming right between the inner thighs again, just above the knee. Your feet are flat on the floor, okay? Your hands are gonna come to the top of your jump board. Now, I want you to find distance from your jump board so that your arms can be straight, okay? They're down at an angle, but they're straight. Palms are flat, I'm not gonna grip my jump board, I'm just gonna keep my fingers open nice and wide. Now. Roll your shoulders down your back, you wanna look straight forward. On your exhale, you're gonna find a squat. So you're gonna reach your sitting bones back, allowing the torso to tilt and the elbows are gonna bend. Keep all 10 toes flat on the floor. You're heavier through your heel than you are through your toes. And then you're gonna inhale as you rise back up. So this is a narrow squat with that peanut. Reach the sitting bones back, because you're reaching the sitting bones back, you're allowing your torso to tilt to protect your low back, just like we did on that lunge, right? Inhale, rise up through the inner thighs and the pelvic floor. Let's go four more. Reach back into that squat and inhale to rise. Last three. We're gonna hold that squat then. Reach back, feel the broadening at the glute. Feel the sitting bones get further away from each other. And then they narrow as you rise, right? Last two, those are your bone rhythms. Reach back into your squat. Narrow the sitting bones to rise. Last one you're gonna hold. Reach back into your squat and hold. Now, notice my hands are super light on the jump board. It really just is a tactile element again. That's all it is. You're gonna peel your right heel off the floor. So you're gonna lift your right heel and lower it. And it only needs to peel two to three inches. Lift and lower. And I want you to press down through the ball of the foot as you peel the heel. So you're recruiting your inner thigh, which connects to your psoas. So think about pulling up that suspender strap on one side of the spine to lift the heel. Kind of like a puppet string, right? You pull up that puppet string, the heel lifts. Your peanut's gonna wobble, and that's okay. I want it to be difficult to hold on to. Okay, right heel and down. Good, left heel and down. Now the next time your right heel is lifted, hold it lifted, and now you're gonna squeeze your peanut one time, squeeze, 
and pulse your squat one time, down through the left sitting bone and up. Squeeze the peanut, pulse down and up. So your right heel is off the floor. I am pulsing the peanut one time and pulsing my squat one time. Peanut, squat. Now when I pulse the squat, I think about right underneath my left sitting bone where the glute and the hamstring connect. Okay, down and up. Squeeze the peanut from the pelvic floor, down and up. You have two more. Squeeze the peanut, down and up. It's not your knees squeezing the peanut, it's the pelvic floor narrowing. Down and up. Now, hold your squat. Set your right heel down. Pick up the left heel. Relax your grip on the jump board, okay? Hold it here. You're going to pulse the peanut from the pelvic floor and pulse down through your right glute and hamstring. Peanut, down and up. Peanut, down and up. Very focused. Is your rib cage stacked over your hips? We want that alignment. Draw the belly button up and in. Good. My knees are just slightly behind my toes in this narrow position. Good. A broadening of the right sitting bone. Squeeze the peanut. Good. Down and up, in and out. Down and up, in and out. Two more. Down and up, in and out. Last one. Down and up. In and out now, set your left heel down, hold. We're gonna peel both heels, but we're gonna start with the right. Right heel comes up first, you're on the ball of the foot. Left heel comes up as well, hold. You're still in your squat. Can you pick up your right arm, wide V? Can you pick up your left arm, hold, hold your squat, hold the balance on the balls of your feet. Narrow on your peanut and hold this for eight, for seven, Six, five, four, three, two. Heels down and come all the way up. Oh, shake it out, shake it out. Get rid of your peanut. Just toss it on the carriage. You're going to stay at your bar to stretch, okay? Oh, there it goes. <laughs> all right, we're going to turn to the left. Right hand on your jump board. Your right foot's going to stay down. Let's take that left leg, and you're going to cross it in front of your right both feet are still flat on the floor. You're going to take that left arm and you're going to inhale that left arm up and over the, the ear. That bicep falls over the ear for that nice little side bend. Lengthening all the way from your left heel up the side of the body and out the fingertips for four. Breathe for three. Last two. Good. Come all the way back to start. Let's take the other side right away. Turn around. Left hand on the jump board. Left foot stays flat. Right leg crosses in front of the left. You're going to inhale that right arm up and overhead, finding lots of length on the right side body. Hold it and breathe for four, for three, whew, for two. That last sequence was a toughie. Good. And come back through center. Turn and face your jump board. You're going to take your left foot. Let's start with the left one. And you're going to bring it all the way up to the top of your jump board. Now, if that's too much for you and your foot bar is more accessible, bring it to the foot bar. Okay? It can be at an angle off the body. It does not need to be in front of you. Okay? So I have my left leg at an angle off the body. I'm going to bring my arms up and overhead. I'm standing straight up on my right leg. I'm going to rotate to face my left foot. And now I'm going to exhale as I fold over that left leg. Now what I want you to make sure of is that you're not locking out your left knee. Try to keep that joint pliable and manageable. Okay, it's not locked out. Hold that stretch right there for four. Feeling a nice stretch through the right waistline as well. We're going to get deeper into that in two. Holding your fold, take your right hand to the outside of your left foot and feel the stretch down the right waistline. You can also bring it to the jump board on top of that left hand if that feels better, but I want you to feel the stretch down the right side for four, for three, for two. Good, come all the way back up, place that left foot back on the floor. Right leg's gonna come up to the jump board. The back of the, back of the ankle is up there. We're going to bring those arms up and overhead, rotate through the waist to find your right foot, and on your exhale, you're going to fold over that right leg, forward fold, keeping the right knee soft. Hold it there. 
Breathing normally for four, trying not to lock out the right knee for three, for two. Take that left hand to the outside of the right foot and feel a deeper stretch down your left waistline. And breathe for four, for three. Good, last two. Coming all the way back up, put that right foot on the floor. You're gonna bring both arms up and overhead, big inhale. On your exhale, you're gonna fold forward over those legs. You're gonna let those arms hang directly in front of the body. Nice forward fold. Hold and breathe right here. Everything is relaxed. The knees are not locked out, but I want you to open up the back of the leg as much as possible. Hold and breathe for four, for three, last two. On your inhale, you're gonna round and stack that spine one vertebrae at a time, all the way up to standing. Your arms are gonna come up and overhead. Bring your hands to prayer palms and pull them down to chest center and give yourself a round of applause because that was a toughie. That was a toughie, guys. Nice job. There was a lot in that one, okay? You had pelvic stability, core control, and engagement. Good, you had upper body strength work in there as well through the shoulders. I mean, we hit it all. You felt quads, inner thighs, shakes, lots of shakes. <laughs> Good job, you guys. You know, if you ever have questions for me, you know how to reach me. You can leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. I respond to everything myself. Sometimes it takes me a little while, but I promise I will get back to you. If you'd rather get in contact with me on a more personal level, find my website, jesspfit.com and it's all right there for you. You have a contact page which will email me directly. You have my on-demand links to my on-demand reformer workouts, my on-demand mat workouts. Those are different than what you are finding on YouTube. So if you're looking for more, that's a way to get it. Okay, there's over 100 reformer workouts and mat Pilates workouts up on those on-demand channels and I feed them weekly. So check it out, okay? Um, we have live classes every week, so if you're interested, another way to reach out to me via email, I will get you that information. Um, any questions at all, email is the very best thing. All right, you guys. I will see you soon. Have a wonderful day, nice job, and I'll see you next time.